Well, take your Bibles, and uh, we're going to go to Mark chapter 4 and verse 39. Mark chapter 4, verse 39. We're going to read a couple verses there, and then we're going to go to a few other places as we give you some principles and some, some practical ways to apply God's peace to your problem. Applying God's peace to your problem. But let's go to Mark chapter 4. That's where we'll start and just kind of get a running start from there. That was our text from this morning, and I think this will be helpful for you. It's going to be very practical. Here's why I think it's very practical, because we all have problems. Every one of us, if you don't have a problem, you will have a problem. Isn't that encouraging? Isn't that just the most encouraging thing you heard all day? Um, but that's just life. Life brings problems. And what we saw this morning is those problems are really opportunities for God to show himself strong. And um, let's talk tonight about how to, how to apply God's peace to your problem. So the story, Mark chapter 4, there's the great storm of wind in verse 37. The waves beat into the ship so that it was now full and he, this is Jesus, was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea Obey him. Father, I pray that you would use this message tonight. Please use your word. Lord, I know that represented in this room are so many problems, so many challenges, so many, so many things that we can't solve on our own, so many issues that this life brings, and, and living in a sinful world that, that just happens. So Lord, I pray that tonight you would use your word, and you'd become very real to us, and you'd help us to understand how your peace can solve our problems and, and help us through our problems. In Jesus' name, amen. The, the word that, or the words that, the thought that jumped out at me as I was studying this, I said it this morning, but I'll say it again, is this. The storm was raging all around, but Jesus was asleep in the, in the ship. He was asleep in the hinder part of the ship. And uh, if, if you can picture a ship, you can picture a ship going up and down, that's the part of the ship that's going to be moving the most. It wasn't asleep in the middle of the ship where you'd have a little bit of motion there, but he was a ship asleep in, in the hinder part. That would have been the back of the ship, either this side or this side. And every time it goes over a wave, it's going to go up, and then it's going to go down, and it's going to crash. And if you're going to get seasick, if you're going to not be able to sleep, that's right where it's going to be in the hinder part of the ship, and that's where he's sleeping. But the peace that was in him... As soon as he stands up and he rebukes the sea and the waves and the wind, the peace that is in him goes out and calms the sea. The peace that God has is what you need for your problem. It's what I need for my problems. Now I want to look at some practical ways of applying God's peace to our problem. This morning I mentioned this, and I was going to save it for tonight, but I really want to... Uh, to finish with a, a salvation emphasis this morning. That's Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Turn there, if you would. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. As you're turning there, I'm going to read you this prophecy from Isaiah 9, 6. I read it this morning, and we're going to move on, and we'll not really review any more from that. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, I know we, we throw those two together. It's really two separate names. Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That's who He is. Romans chapter 5, verse 1, the Bible says this, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's peace is only available after you place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I mentioned that this morning, and how exciting it was to see the, the young man come forward and, and uh, trust Christ as his Savior. I picked him up this morning, and, and uh, we drove in together. He kind of shared some of his problems that he'd kind of been dealing with. and um, He's on fire for the Lord. He wants to serve God, but he, he'd, had, he'd had some problems. After, after the service, he came up to me, and we were getting ready to ride home together. He said, wow, you took what I told you this morning, and you preached it all in your sermon this morning. But, you know, I think all of us could have said something like that. If we have problems when, 
whenever we realize that, that God's, um, God's solution is His peace. Well, He came forward this morning. He trusted Christ as His Savior. What a great thought that is. Once you have peace with God, you can have peace through your problems. The word justified is a, is a legal term. Uh, is, it, it means removing guilt and, and not, not having to stand as, as guilty for your sins. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Think about this. Without God, there is no peace. You've seen those signs. Maybe it's a bumper sticker that you've seen where it says, N-O, God, no God. And it says, N-O, peace, no peace. And then underneath it says, K-N-O-W, no God. And then, and then it says, K-N-O-W, no peace. And um, it sounds the same whenever you say it, but whenever you read it, without God, there's no peace. But if you know God, then, then there is peace. And what a great reminder that that is. If you're fighting with God, you won't have peace. If you're running from God, you won't have peace. If you're hiding things from God, you won't have peace. And I think most of us, if we were to, to take a, don't raise your hand here, but if we were to take a, like an anonymous survey where we could write down on a piece of paper, I think most of us would say at some point in our life, you know, I've, I've fought with God. I fought with God. I, I can tell you that I fought with God. God called me to preach when I was 10 years old, and I, I did a lot of preparing. I, I remember as a 12-year-old boy, um, the, the, the Christian school we went to, they started a preacher boys class, and that was kind of fun to go to, and, um, especially just because we were getting out of class, and I enjoyed going to that part of it. Um, but as a 17-year-old, uh, fighting with God over that and going a different direction for a while, going the, the direction that I wanted to go, um, um, hanging out with some friends that I, that I shouldn't have been with and, and kind of fighting God's direction in my life. And I think a lot of us, if we were to, to be honest, we'd say, you know, I did spend a time of my life fighting God. And if you'd also be honest, you'd say, whenever I was fighting God, I didn't have peace. I was miserable. I was struggling. I remember a, a note that my mom wrote to me my first year of college. I was at UNM. I was fighting God at the time. I, I knew I was supposed to be a preacher. I knew I was supposed to be preparing to, to be a preacher, but I was going a different direction, and I was miserable. And I remember a note that she wrote that was so encouraging, just kind of kind of one of those, I can kind of see that things are rough for you. I can kind of see that, that um, you're, you're, you're struggling through this, but I'm praying for you, that type of a thing. I really was. I was struggling. I didn't have peace because I was fighting God. You can just ask Jonah if running from God brings peace. Think about that. Jonah gets up. He runs to, to, to Joppa. He hops on a ship to Tarshish. Um, Jonah didn't have peace. When you're hiding from God, when you're running from God, when you're fighting, from, or fighting with God, or you're, you're hiding things from God, you're not going to have peace. Peace is available, though, after you place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And once you have peace with God, you can have peace through your problems. You know, when you allow God to work in your life, one of the results is peace. Did you know, you probably knew this already, but peace is one of the results of yielding to the Holy Spirit. In fact, it's called a fruit of the Spirit. One of the reasons, it's called a fruit of the Spirit because when you yield to God, God begins working in your life and then fruit starts to appear. Kind of like if you're to, to plant a seed and water it and a tree grows, then eventually if it's a fruit tree, fruit will start to appear. Whenever God lives in you and you yield yourself to Him and, and uh, you build a relationship with Him, fruit will begin to appear. Do you remember what some of those fruits are? In Galatians chapter 5, Verse 22, there's a list of them, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and the third one is peace. Peace isn't something that we can just manufacture. It's not just like a symbol. You flash at people and you know, peace, and, and they flash peace back at you. And you're like, oh, I feel so peaceful now. It doesn't, just doesn't work that way. You can't manufacture peace in yourself. You can't just go, I know that you can go to a peaceful place, and um, you can go to a place where maybe there's the hummingbirds buzzing and the bees these aren't peaceful. Um, crickets chirping. Maybe, maybe you can go to a peaceful place. Maybe the waterfall or the stream flowing. But that doesn't give you peace in your heart. Peace is a, is a fruit of the Spirit. It's something only God can work inside of you. And, and the fruits of the Spirit are a result of gaining a, a closer relationship with God. Love, joy, peace, all of them. They, they, they come as we yield ourselves to God working in our life. And then uh, peace is one of those. Go to Psalm 29, if you would. I'm going to give you five random thoughts, but they all have to do with peace. Psalm chapter 29 and verse number 11. They're all, they're all kind of short thoughts. 
And it works out well for tonight. We don't have a lot of time tonight. Ladies, you did a great job saying those verses. Um, how many of y'all were, were challenged by that? I, I was. I, I thought, I want to do that now. I don't know if I can do it in one week. They've been working on that for, for months, but um, that, that really did. That challenged me. Thank you for that. Psalm chapter 29, verse 11. All right, Psalm chapter 29, verse 11. The Bible says this, The Lord will give strength unto His people. The Lord will bless His people with peace. So let me, let me give you a thought. This is, a, this is the main thought that I just kind of want to get across here. God's peace comes when you rest in God's strength. God's peace comes when you rest in God's strength. If you're trying to do it on your own, you're, first of all, you're not going to do very good. I've learned that way too many times. Second, you don't have peace. Whenever you rest in God's strength, though, whenever you can just kind of lay back and, and say, no, not be lazy, but, but lay back and say, God, I can't do this. I'm going to rest in your strength. I'm going to trust you to take care of this. That's when peace comes. Let me read you a story. This is from 1555. That's a long time ago. There's a man named Nicholas Ridley. Nicholas Ridley was sentenced to be burned at the stake in England because of his witness for Christ. On the night before his execution, his brother came and he was, as, as Ridley was in the jail cell there, his brother came and offered to stay with him in the prison chamber, as he said, to be of assistance and comfort. And that, that, that was a good gesture. His, his brother is about to, to be executed the next day and, and he came and said, just can I stay with you? I'll comfort you and kind of help you through the night. Nicholas Ridley, he, he said no to that offer. And here's what he said. I instead, God willing, he said, I intend, God willing, to go to bed and sleep as quietly tonight as ever I did. What an amazing thought that is. He's going to be burned at the stake the next day. And the reason that that's how they treated many of the Christians who were sharing the gospel and um, distributing Bibles and things like that. The reason he's able to say, let me read that again, what he said, I intend, God willing, to go to bed and sleep as quietly tonight as ever I did. It was because he knew the peace of God and he could rest in the strength of the everlasting arms of his Lord to meet his need. What a neat thought that is. I can't imagine being in his position. Really, I can't. I'd like to say that in the same situation, I'd do the same thing. I'd like to say that if, if I had the chance, if I have the, that, that option to, to either recant and, and, uh, and deny Christ or, or to stand firm, I'd like to say that I'd stand firm. I've never been in that situation. I can't say that, that, I, that I would. I hope I could. I hope I would. I'd like to say that. But I can't imagine that. And, and, and thinking tomorrow I'll be burned at the stake and tomorrow I'll be tortured until I die. But, and then still saying I'm going to rest in the strength of God and... I have peace. I am at peace with what's going to happen. God's peace comes when you rest in God's strength. The Lord will give strength unto His people. The Lord will bless His people with peace. What an amazing thought that is. Here's another random thought. So go to Isaiah chapter 26, if you would. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse number 3. I think this is a, a powerful one, and I've got one example for it. Isaiah chapter 26, verse number 3. This is a, a Bible principle that I think will, will help you so much. Isaiah 26, verse number 3. I'll give you just a minute to find that there. Okay, raise your hand when you found it. Raise your hand if you didn't find it. Okay, so we all raised our hands, so we're good to go. All right, Isaiah 26, 3. Here's what the Bible says. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Let me read that again. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Here's the principle. God's peace comes when you trust him and keep your mind anchored to him. That's basically the best way I can, I can uh, restate that. And the example I'll give you is Peter from Matthew chapter 14. Why don't you turn there? Matthew chapter 14. This morning we use the storm as an example of, of seeing God's peace and an opportunity for, for God to come through and, and show us His peace. Let's go to the other storm. 
This is the storm where the, Jesus sent the disciples on ahead. He had just fed the 5,000 people, and Jesus went up to the mountain to pray, and he told his disciples, go ahead and get in the boat and go to the other side again. It was Jesus' idea. They followed his, his plan, and because they followed his plan, they found themselves in the middle of another huge storm. While they're in the middle of the huge storm, Jesus comes walking to them on the water. If you hadn't grown up in church, what I just said would have blown you away, right? Jesus came walking on the water. Now, that's incredible. I'm not trying to get a response from you. I'm just trying to say, this is not normal, right? It's not like, it's not like he, he, he ate breakfast. Or it's, this is different, all right? He sends his disciples away. This huge storm comes, waves everywhere, and they're afraid for their life again. The Bible says Jesus comes walking to them on the water, and the disciples see him from a little ways away. Now, it's not normal to see somebody walking out on the water. So they'd never seen it before. They, they look at each other, and they start saying, did you see that? Hey, Peter, did you see that? I kind of caught out of the corner of my eye, and uh, I think I saw a ghost. I, get, have you ever been at like a sleepover when you were a kid or camping out or something? And it's kind of dark, and, and somebody says, did you see that? And everybody gets kind of spooked. And everybody starts looking. And then before long, even if there's nothing there, everybody sees it. Now, in this case, there's a storm. They're scared for their life. They really do see somebody walking towards them on the water. Did you see that? Did you see that? Now they're, now they're scared for their life of drowning, but they're even more scared because this Bible calls it a spirit. They think a spirit, a ghost, is walking toward them. They're really in trouble. Okay, so it's in Matthew chapter four, uh, 14, verse 24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> it is I. Be not afraid. Now, the spirit that they've convinced themselves this is a ghost is now talking to them. Peter recognizes him, and he says in verse 28, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me or ask me to come unto thee on the water. That was a crazy request. That was a very strange request. But Peter says, Jesus, if it's you, Lord, if it's you, just ask me to come out on the water. Jesus answers with one word. He says, come. If I was Peter, I would have probably started negotiating at that point. So uh, did you really mean to come out on the water? Or, or maybe, uh, but that's not what Peter did. He, Jesus says, come, and the Bible says, and well, let's see, where were we? And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. This is an incredible story. It was incredible enough that Jesus is walking on the water. I've often wondered what it felt like. Did anybody wonder these things? Was it like walking on jello? Was it like walking on a sidewalk? And, and the storm was still going. So was it like walking up one hill of water and down the other hill of water? Or, or was it kind of just going up and down? I don't know what it was, but Peter's out of the ship. And, and, and a lot of times whenever I pictured a little boat that he got out of, you know, kind of threw his leg over one side and stepped on the water. But the Bible says here, when he was come down out of the ship, I think we're talking a bigger ship than just a little, little fishing boat. Maybe climbing down a ladder off the side of the ship. I'm not exactly sure. He climbs down. He gets off the ship now. And now he's out on the water. And he's standing on the water. I don't know what Peter's thinking. I'm thinking he's blown away. It's like, this is really happening. If he's from Texas, what do you say? This is not happening. I am not believing this. Everybody read something like that? Okay. Um, so he's, he's walking on the water. He's walking to Jesus. And you know how the story goes. He keeps his eyes on Jesus. He's focused on him. He's walking on the water. But we know the rest of the story. What happens next? But, verse 30, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. We give Peter a hard time. And we say, that man... He had no faith. Look at him. I mean, Jesus, Jesus said, where's thy faith? Why did you doubt? But he got out of the boat. That just blows me away. I'm impressed. He got out of the boat. He started walking. He's the only other man that walked on water that we know of. He walks towards Jesus, but then he starts getting distracted by the wind and, and by the waves. Now, there's enough waves to, to, to cause the ship to be about to sink. These are some big waves out there. You ever been out in big waves in a, in a little boat? 
I've never really been in a situation like that, but I watch Dangerous Catch, right? So I know what's going on. I, I, I'm with the, that's the one where they go catch the, the, the crabs up by Alaska. Is that what his deadliest catch, something like that? Um, so he's out there, he's walking on, and we give him a tough time. But think about this. The wind is howling. The waves are crashing all around him. Somehow he's standing on top of the water, and he begins to look away. He looks away. He looks at the wind. He looks at the, at the water. And then, I, again, I, I'm not sure how to think about this. Maybe you've already thought this through and you know the answer to this. The Bible says he begins to sink. I don't know what happens here if it's like a slow sink. Like, like when, you, when you're swimming and you stand on one of those little floaty surfboard things and you kind of like that. Or if he's just... I'm not sure what happens here. He has time to yell, Lord, help me. And Jesus, the Bible says immediately he's there and they're, and they're in the ship. But what happened? He took his eyes off Jesus. He took his focus off of Jesus. And that's when he has the problems. God's peace comes when you trust him and keep your mind anchored to him. How's a great way to keep our mind anchored to him? Stay in his word. Keep, keep, keep a, a daily dose of, of his word coming. Verse uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Now, I'm, I'm moving quick. We've got two more. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. And then the last one will be in Philippians chapter 4. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 6. Quick review. God's peace is only available after you place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. God's peace comes when you rest in God's strength. God's peace comes when you trust Him and you keep your mind anchored to Him. Now look at Romans chapter 8, verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. God's peace comes when you think less about the world around you and more about the truths of the Bible. I'll give you one example and we'll move on. You know, let me, let me say it one more time. God's peace comes when you think less about the world around you and more about the truths of the Bible. Now, I'm going to just try to make this real practical and real real for you. Bible verses about heaven and about eternal life remind us that every problem in this life is temporary. Every one of us, at some point, you're going to go to a funeral. You're going to know somebody that you've lost. I, I shared the gospel with somebody yesterday, uh, a, a, a young man. He's 18 years old. His name is Jonathan. And um, I asked him if he'd thought about you know, eternal, eternity after life, after death. And I asked him if he thought about that. He said, yeah, I've, I've lost several people recently. He'd lost his grandpa and his great-grandpa or something like that, and they'd, they'd passed away recently. And it's times like that where you see the humanity that we have. You see how frail we are. You see how short life is. And then it's times like that whenever you come back to the Bible and you read a verse about heaven and um, or about eternal life and and, and it changes your perspective so that we don't just focus on this temporary life, but on eternal life. Sometimes it's, it's easy to forget the truths that are there in the Bible. And it's easy to get caught up in, 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 in just life and, 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 and even death. But whenever you get back to the Word of God and, and you read something like this, John 14, 1, Jesus is talking and He says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Right out of Jesus Christ's mouth himself, he says, don't worry. There's a, in my Father's house are many mansions, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. What a great reminder that is. What, a, what an amazing way to, to take our, our mind and, and not worry about all this going on and, and just help us to refocus on, on the truths of the Bible, not this world around us. And he said, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. See, God's peace comes when you think less about this world around you and more about the truths of the Bible. If, if, if you want peace, you will stay in this Word of God. It'll remind you, and, and you'll come across verses like that, and like, like the one in 1 Thessalonians that says, We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, when the trump of God sounds, and, and you start reading about 
that rapture and about how we'll be a forever be with the Lord. And you're reminded that's what's really real. And, and that's, that's what I want to focus on. That peace comes through that. Go to one more place, if you would. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Philippians 4, 6. You know this verse. You've heard it a lot of times before. Practical ways of, of bringing God's peace to our problem. Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. We, we, we're familiar with this verse. We've, we've read about it before. Be careful for nothing. Don't, don't worry about anything. But pray about it. There, there's, isn't that a great solution right there? There's a little more we're going to look at. Don't worry about it. Pray about it. If you're like me, you're going to worry first and then remember to pray later. That's just kind of how I naturally do it. That's not the right way. That's just kind of human, I think. Worry about it, worry about it, and then, oh, let me take it to God and let me pray about it there. So be careful for nothing but in everything. Pray about it, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. Now look at the very next word, verse. What's, what's the result of that? And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Here's the principle, and we're almost done. God's peace comes when you ask God to provide your needs and care for your problems. What an, what an amazing thing this is. When I have a problem, I can take it to God, and I can trust Him to take care of it. It's, it's like this. Problem, meet my God. Let, let Him take care of it. Now, I, I know we, we still have it. Sometimes we, we're, we're not very clear in how to do that. We'll say this. We'll say, Jesus is the answer to every problem that you have and kind of, kind of go with that. But we're talking about prayer now specifically. If I've got a problem, if you've got a problem, God says, don't worry about it, but pray about it instead. Somebody said this. Uh, I think it was an, an older lady came to the preacher and he said, Pastor, you've been preaching against worrying, but I want to prove to you that worrying really works because most of the stuff I worry about never happens anyway. And it, it works. Um, that was a joke, okay? And that's just the way it is. Most of the stuff we worry about, it doesn't happen. It, but, but we worry about it. So instead of worrying about it, let's pray about it, take it to God, and say to God, look, look this, is, this is my problem. Maybe it's a sin that I'm struggling with. Instead of worrying about it, we take it to God. Say, God, this is, this is a sin, and I'm struggling in this area. Maybe it's a, a safety issue. Maybe it's a, a health issue. Maybe it's a finance issue. Maybe it's a relationship issue. All of these things can be problems. But if I can take that problem and say, God, here's the problem I'm having. Maybe it's not my problem. Maybe it's somebody else's problem. But here's a problem. And God, I'm going to give it to you, and I'm going to ask you for that. The Bible says in prayers and supplications, uh, and making your requests known unto God. God's peace comes when you ask God to provide your needs and care for your problems. Here's the simple, the simple answer. Prayer brings peace peace. Prayer being, brings peace. Let me explain that just a little bit more. I've got about one sentence left here. I might expand it into a couple more, all right? So, but, but listen to this carefully. Prayer being, brings peace. Not someone else's prayer, but your prayer. From your heart to your God. I don't think there's anything wrong with somebody writing down prayers in a book. We have, we have them in the Bible. I don't think it's wrong to go through and like in the, in the book of Psalms and, and, and pray back um, David's prayers to God. But, but not going through a, a ritualistic type of a, I'm, I'm going to spend some time going through a prayer book because I have problems. No, I mean, taking my problem to my God and saying, God, this, this is my problem. God, this is where I'm struggling. God, this, this is how much we're short on, on finances this month. God, this is this is a person I'm, I'm struggling in a relationship with this person, and, I, and I, I don't know how to fix this, but I want to take it to you. That, that type of a, a prayer, taking my problem to God, taking your problem to God, and, and prayer brings peace. Okay, there it is. This life brings storms. These storms fill up our boat with water. We feel like we're sinking. Jesus is there. We've been following his will. He knows about the storms. He knew about the storms before we were going to get into them. We get in the middle of the storm. 
the peace that is in Him. He is the Prince of Peace. He can take that, and He can take the peace that's in His heart and bring it to my problem. Here's some verses on, on how to do that. We need that. We need, so many of us, we're, we're struggling with anxiety, we're struggling with depression, we're struggling with, with so many different things, with worry. Let's, let's, let's let God take His peace and, and bring it to our problems. Father, I pray that You would use this message to help us to, to do that tonight. Lord, I pray that You would help us to take some of these practical ways, focusing on Your Word and um, the, those, these, these principles that we learned tonight. Um, Lord, I pray that maybe you would take one of them and you just help us to remember it and help us to, to take that and, and begin to live it on the way out tonight. Help us to apply it to our lives. And Lord, thank you that you're a God that loves us and cares and you want to bring your peace to our problems. Lord, I pray that you would, you would help us because I know we've all got a lot, of, a lot of issues we're dealing with, a lot of worry that we could really spend a lot of time and energy on. Lord, I pray that tonight you would help us to be able to give those problems to you, to ask you to care for them, and then to trust you that you will. I pray that you would help us to leave with a, a lighter heart tonight, knowing that you are carrying our problems and that you want to, and that you can. And they're not a surprise to you, but you, you know about them, and, and you care.